Hi, this is Mario, the Perpetual Traveler. Now, let me explain to you how to travel from Hong Kong to Shenzhen, vice versa. It's very fast, Shenzhen, China, of course. Now, the way to do that from Hong Kong is to take the minivan, which they refer to in Chinese as Min Bao Chua. It's basically, uh, which means basically bread car. It's a minivan. Um, generally, seven people will sit in it and uh, it costs about 150 yuan. So in dollars, probably $20. Um, you can have two, three luggage, no issues with your carry-on and they'll drive you across the border. Now, the way from Hong Kong to China, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna take the van, you're gonna go across Hong Kong and then in Hong Kong, it's gonna, at the end, when it gets to the border, it's just gonna drop you there and you're gonna take your luggage and you're gonna cross on foot. So if you have a lot of luggage, it might be an issue. So you're gonna cross the border over there and then on the other side, uh, once you get into China, uh, it will be a tons of people try to help you carry your luggage on the other side and then you can take a taxi and you're in Shenzhen and there's no issues. So that's one way. You can take the metro also with Lohu, the, Le, the metro station in Lohu in Hong Kong and, try, and go to, to, um, to China, that's also easy. Once you're gonna get in China, same concept, uh, you're gonna cross the border and you'll be into China. To travel with the, mi the same minivan system from uh, China to Hong Kong is generally a bit cheaper. From Hong Kong to China, it was uh, 50, uh, sorry, 150 yuan, so 20 bucks. The other way, probably 110. Um, it's easier to do it from China to, Hong to the airport because you're gonna take the minivan, which will already be uh, the right side, so basically um, left-handed, unless you go from a, a bit further in town, if you go from uh, from a bit further, let's say even uh, all the way from Dongguan or uh, Guangzhou, it's another matter, you may have like a regular car drive left side, uh, and then they're gonna change minivan, but normally from Shenzhen, they'll have a Hong Kong uh, rated minivan, and you're gonna go to the border, the Hong Kong borders, you won't even have to get out at all, they're just gonna open all the windows, uh, check everyone's passport, and then you're going to cross. Now, there's a risk here, and this is what I want to talk to you about. I missed a flight once, cost me, didn't cost me anything for the flight because I'm elite with the airline, it was Continental a few years back before the merger, uh, and also uh, I was in business class, so it didn't care, it didn't charge me anything. I literally missed my flight though, and I had to stay at the, at the Regal at the airport, cost me 400 for the night just because I had boxes, okay? Boxes is a problem. If you have um, one of my staff, basically I was carrying more things than one of my employee, instead of buying cheap luggages, which I know to do all the time, but I, I listened to him, the minivan didn't want to take me with my boxes. So I had to take the bus and carry my, my luggage. It was way more complicated and I ended up missing the flight. The other thing that you want to be careful and that could have happened to me, it didn't, even though I crossed the border 50 times, I always used to go the day before. If my flight's at 10 in the morning and I have to be at the airport at eight, I, I stay in Hong Kong for the night. I didn't stay in Shenzhen. So I used to take the minivan after the meal. Let's say I will eat with my friends in Shenzhen or my employees. And then at seven, eight, I would cross the border into Hong Kong, then get to the, to the hotel in Hong Kong. Generally, I stay at the Regal at the airport because it's a good hotel. You could stay at the Marriott, which is five minutes from there. Uh, it, it's a good hotel. but Regal because you just go downstairs and you just take your flight. You're right in the terminal. Basically, the the the, um, the, the hotel itself is in Terminal One, right where you take off. So the thing is, you have to be careful because if you take it too late, okay. Let's say my flight was at ten. I had to be at the airport at eight, and I decide I go at seven because I know I'll be there at eight. What if there's a problem? And it happened to me that some some guy had a problem, and it took me four hours to cross the border and arrive at one a.m. Still fine, I didn't miss my flight, but what I mean is it took me four hours to cross the border because this one person uh, had issues with her passport and they had to bring the Chinese authority and all that stuff. So we were delayed and basically we couldn't cross the border. So you have to be careful with that. You make sure, because there's seven people in the van, okay? So if it's not you, it's somebody else that could have a problem. So be very, very careful. Uh, you're not going to have any issues. If they were carrying drugs or something like that, the authorities in Hong Kong are smart enough to, or China, uh, they're, under, they're smart enough to understand that, you know, it could be anybody. But the point is, 
just be careful. Give yourself ample amount of time, three hours at least, to be able to cross the border when you come back. Either way, so that you don't miss the flight or anything else. All right. So that's it. Same thing when I, you know, you, you land in Hong Kong. I used to stay in Hong Kong for the night and pass the border in the morning because passing it at night, it's a bit more risky. Uh, a friend of mine had his cell phone stolen from his, his pockets and stuff like that. You know, it's a bit more risky at night when you get into a, a very, very crowded area into China. So be careful with that as well. Cross in the morning if you can. If you can afford the, uh, the night in, in Hong Kong, if your schedule allowed and your finances allowed, stay in Hong Kong. If you enjoyed that video, give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to our channel and visit our website, mariostenger.com, where we have tons of videos on how to travel all over the world. I'm pouring all the knowledge and experience I've acquired over the past 15 years traveling and living everywhere on Earth. Pursue the dream. There's nothing better than just exploring our world. There's so much to see. And doing it as a perpetual traveler is an amazing thing. And you can do it too.